We're just rolling out of Bahia onto the next sort of phase of our journey, which is about 500k to Addis Ababa. And we're sort of, I guess, thinking about it in 500 kilometer blocks. We've got lots of uphill on this leg. I don't feel super comfortable filming here, to be honest. So just keep it brief, but uh, it just feels like, you know, people talk about hit towns. This sort of feels like a hit country. There's people walking around with guns, and when you do see the police, they seem sort of like they just blend in, they're nobody special. Don't necessarily feel like they give you any more safety. Beautiful roads, beautiful scenes here in Ethiopia. Just had our first stone of the day. Good to get it out of the way. Just pulled off the road for a quick snack under this tree. There he is, the lesser spotted kiwi. Tell you what, <clears throat> when you can find a nice spot like this away from many people, not that we hate the people, <laughs> but they're very full on. You find a nice little spot like this, it's hard to beat. <clears throat> really good cycle touring country. Oh, wait, that's not Dan. Looks like I'm following the wrong cyclist. We go along these roads and... Now this one here looks flat, but we are climbing. We can tell by the gears that we're in and how much the uh, buses are struggling as they go by. Are you fine? My brown skin is definitely a confusion for some of these people. They kind of uh, give a bit of a double take before they call me Falenji. Uh, hello. And then I say, Salam, in my best Ethiopian voice. And they're like, huh? Is he Ethiopian? Beautiful rock formation over there with the horses in the foreground. Piano? <laughs> piano, I don't play the piano. <laughs> These birds are really pretty like a bluey purpley sort of color this is a crater lake yeah, yeah so, uh, wow yeah. Oh, we, we were just so this is the edge here 150 meters down to the lake apparently and you can camp here but we're gonna head to a hotel instead this is literally the ideal countryside for growing food and luscious crops everything a man can have Some say there's a pollution problem here. But, uh, how's the shirt today, bro? <laughs> uh, we're, about, we're at about 20% today. 20%? 20%. Yeah, the, the shirt holds up better in Ethiopia than it does in Sudan, I think. Look at this. Verdant beauty. Unutilized and the bits that are inefficient, poorly done, wasted. It's sad. Yeah. Just kind of talking down the episode a little bit from today. Um, did a 90 mile day from Bahadar down to a place called Buri and saw some things. Saw some Ethiopian situations which kind of s sit with you 
you know, you're lying in bed and feeling lucky to have a bed, even though you're staying in a hotel that doesn't have water. Um, we saw some people on the way out of town sleeping on the central reservation and um, somebody that Dan met, well actually we both met him, was saying that um, some of these people are refugees, like, because they've had their villages burnt out. Or, Re- yeah, refugees in their own country. Yeah, um, like Ethiopian refugees. Mm. Some of them maybe like Eritrean and stuff as well, I guess. Yeah, yeah just a... Uh, I mean, it's, it's the continuation of the broken Africa, which mm. we've seen throughout. Um, it's, uh, it's, it's tough because the resources here are so much more plentiful than, than we saw in Sudan. Yes. Um, the Sudanese, you know, th- they make do with, with little and... They've got sand. And they've got sand and they've got you know, a little ribbon beside the Nile. Yeah. Um, but the Ethiopians have everything. Yeah. Like, the, the, the landscape here is lush, mm. you know? They've got this beautiful, loamy, volcanic soil which would grow anything. The, the, the climate here is perfect. Mm. And yet they're, they're growing the same old teff wheat. Teff and and whatever else. And... and Growing eucalyptus, eucalyptus, which which strips the soil of its nutrients and makes it impossible to grow anything else, and that's about it. Mm. It's just the same old, like just complete lack of creativity, complete lack of any sort of thought process for the future, really. One thing we passed today was about thirty shops selling exactly the same thing and what they were selling were four kilo bags of laundry detergent um, these sort of tribal local craft type drums mm. with like animal hide and um, what looked like a wig yeah I'm not, like hair, <laughs> hair extension things yeah. these three hair, things hair extensions washing powder yeah, and yeah. <laughs> an animal skin furniture. <laughs> what? Um, and, and loads and loads and loads of them. Pretty so, like, well. one shop would have seen another one do it, so they did it. And yeah. then, as somebody put it once, a lot of these places have a whole load of imitation and zero innovation. Mm. And you can just see the abundance of what it could be, especially here in Ethiopia. But it's not being used, and uh, the locals are losing out big time, big time. Yeah. Um, what else? Just the people. Uh, the people are the people that you see on the on the street. Um, there's something about them that is very, very tiresome. <laughs> It's. You get the feeling that what you don't want for them is for them to kill tourism before it properly takes off. It. That's what you really don't want. I feel like it unfortunately might happen that way because they just don't know really how to interact properly unless they're trying to really sell you something in a really pushy way or just screaming give me money give me money yeah because you give me money yeah Yeah, that's that's the directness the the directness that we've had on the roads particularly from the younger people like teenagers um just you give me money give me better like not, not even like, hey, how you doing? Hello. Stop. There's not even. I don't think I've ever had a, a hello. <coughs> no. No. Just you, you, you. Money. As we're going past, money, 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 money. Yeah. Like, what we think of as two bicycles going past, <laughs> what they see is two ATMs <laughs> going by on the road. <laughs> Yeah, yeah. Although, I, I mean, for me, it, it, it really comes down to education. 
and there seems to be a, a step change in the education of of the Ethiopian people. The vast majority are the you, you, money, 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 zero creativity, what seems to be zero real thought for uh, any plan for the future or I don't know I, I don't want to speculate too much but then occasionally you'll come across somebody who you'll say something to and they'll come out with very fluent English and well spoken and they seem to have a you know a, a clear thought process for what you're saying what they want to say yeah um and it's just this really this real step change which yeah. I don't really understand how that happens in a, in a, in a society but maybe there, there are tiers of education I don't know the people on the street are so primal mm. just so basic so so basic just hand to mouth literally we're, we're, we're riding past literally. upturned palms all day yeah and they come with screams of gimme, 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 money, 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 money. And um, sure, we, we do have more than them, definitely. But is that the way to go about it? Is that what what's caused what's caused this? Why why are they doing this? Why isn't it um, a bit more thought through of like, okay, how can we extract something from either the abundant land we have or this growing tourism thing that's happening here, rather than just handouts, gimme. It's it's lazy and it doesn't make you want to help them really. No. No. Tough. Yeah. Anyway, those are our thoughts in the day. Um, we see so much in the day that, we, like, as I said before, is each day is like four days in one worth of stuff that just we go by quickly and we see for six seconds. But um, yeah, I just wanted to regurgitate a little bit here onto the camera. <clears throat> A day in the life, cycle touring Ethiopia.